One very important German word, Krankenwagen. Once again? <laughs> Have you heard that before? Krankenwagen. No. It means Krankenwagen. It's, it's, like, it's the, the ambulance. Oh, that's important. <laughs> He says, if you truly love me, then do what I commanded you to do, which is, for example, preaching the gospel, which is healing the sick. And then the, the Holy Spirit honors that and just comes upon us. That's really important what you say, because this is the time when we really need to start preaching the gospel like crazy. Yeah, 100%. Because the harvest is so ripe. Yeah, we don't know how long it's going to be since the world is over actually like i i have no idea but like it all looks really scary i'm not like the apocalypse person but <laughs> you know yeah. it's it's time because people are there are so many mental illnesses right now so much depression but yeah like like you said you know like the, the harvest is so ripe even even during this corona pandemic suddenly we don't have anything. There's no security in our finances anymore. And uh, even in our jobs, there's, there's nothing we have left other than Jesus himself. And people are just craving for encouragement, for love, for affection. And it's crazy. Like I've been, I've been preaching the gospel. I get to preach the gospel so much lately. And, and I literally don't get any rejection, which I've never experienced before. For like, wow. I think two months, I haven't gotten any rejection It was always like either like obviously either they smile and then they walk off, but it was never like a, any harsh rejection of like, no, get away. I don't want to hear anything. They were always really kind and, and, and thankful, actually, that I would speak to them about Jesus. And um, it's just crazy to see what God is doing right now in our nations in Europe. You know, like the harvest is so ripe. It's ridiculous. Like this is really encouraging to actually do a step one step more and to go to the street because like I I am preparing myself to go to the street to preach again because yeah. I had this excitement after Todd White conference and we did yeah. <laughs> uh, some with my friends we did some walking in the city center and and asking people if they are sick and if we can pray for them and we were really shocked like they, that they were really healed you know yeah like, we were <laughs> like okay whatever we're gonna pray we're gonna make full of ourselves let's do this and then somebody is saying my back pain is gone and wow. we we're like wow <laughs> we didn't really expect it to be so fast pretty crazy when you start to realize that the bible is actually true you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I, i told i totally hear you like sometimes it's like like i said it's like I grew up with this, with the Bible every day. Like I, I was reading it. Like I, I know the stories of the Bible, but then when you actually experience him personally, when he becomes so real, you're like, Oh my goodness. Now it all makes sense. And, and like, how could I live for anything, but for you, you know, like there's, there's nothing more satisfying. There's nothing more important than to just fully surrender and, and be with you and live for you. And, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. He's actually really working. <laughs> yeah. The Bible is actually true. <laughs> yeah. So we have to like go out from our comfort zone. Like for me, it was like every time I, I went to the street, I had to like break something in me to start talking with people. But then you, you always see his presence and his glory. That's true. But also my favorite moments is when, you know, like when you go grocery shopping or something like that, and you just tell the cashier or someone, someone in the grocery store, Hey, I, I just quickly want to tell you that Jesus really loves you. And he cares about you. Is there anything I can pray for you? You know, like, like sometimes I think we, we overcomplicate it with the evangelism part. Like we, we think we have to do daily outreaches where we actually go out on the streets, but You know, Christianity is a lifestyle, like Todd White says, his slogan, yeah. Christian, lifestyle Christianity. It, it really is preaching the gospel as a lifestyle. And if, yeah, got, coming back to you, like the, the girlfriend, boyfriend example, for, like if, if, you, if you're dating someone and you're so madly in love with that person, you want everyone to know. Yeah. Everyone needs to know. And you're telling everybody. And it's the same with Jesus. Like, I'm so convinced of Jesus. I remember Reinhard Bonnke once said, um, Just, just imagine you have found the cure for cancer. 
the cure for cancer, you have it. And your best friend is about to die from, from cancer. Like, of course, you're going to give it to him. Of course, you're going to tell the world because you got the cure to this terrible, terrible disease. And we have the solution. We have the cure to this, this terrible, terrible thing called sin, t- called eternal punishment. And it's, it's Jesus. And we actually, we have to preach the gospel. Yeah, we have to, we have to tell people about Jesus. He's, he's so worthy. Yeah, I was talking with my friend today about this story with this uh, with this guy who couldn't walk, and he was by this Bethesda pool for thirty eight <laughs> years. And when I was watching it lately in the Chosen series, and they mm-hmm. they showed the whole story about like how this guy became uh, how do you call the person who cannot walk. A, a, like a lame person yeah lame person yeah so how he became lame and like the whole story when he was at this pool and trying to get there and people like kicking him off so he couldn't get there and they were before him and how he became depressed because like he was just sitting there and waiting to die mm. and and then Jesus steps in and asks him if he want to be healed and it it really touched my heart because how many people around us are waiting for this healing for like 20 20 30 years you know and they are just going to some witch doctors they are going to to normal doctors and they're trying every medicine and they try Mm -hmm. to pray and nothing works and then they need jesus to walk in this is something that really like ignites my heart that I want to touch these people. I want to be those hands of Jesus who will actually touch those people and they're going to be oh, healed. I'm getting emotional. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't have much time left, but uh, if you would like to tell us some crazy story, what God did for you or some like miracle story, some adventure with, with mm. Jesus, so we can be encouraged that it can also happen to us there's oh my goodness there's so many so many crazy stories and um i'm thinking of this one particular encounter that i had a couple of years ago it was actually after a one of our church services and um i didn't manage to get into the main auditorium because it was so so packed i was sitting in the overflow room and um and i remember we were walking into the overflow room and i was a bit like sad disappointed because like i want to be in the main auditorium like i didn't want to just watch the live stream but um one of my friends said oh in the overflow room the the holy spirit always flows over like he always goes crazy in the overflow room and so i was like all right let's let's see what happens and then suddenly like mid service mid sermon i think the, the the preacher wasn't even preaching about the holy spirit suddenly the holy spirit just broke out like crazy and people front and left right and right and left front and back got completely touched and wrecked by the spirit like this one guy starts shaking like crazy the other guy starts starts laughing starts crying and everyone is getting touched in that room except for me okay. and i was just yeah, sitting in there and i was like okay what is happening here? I'm so confused. God, why are you not encountering me? Um, I just like, I want to feel you as well. And so service is over and we're getting into the car and we're actually driving to some of our friends. We, it was a night of, um, there was a lot of shooting stars and uh, we wanted to watch the shooting stars. So we went to this field with a, a couple of our friends and on the way there, suddenly like the Holy Spirit starts to to bubble up in me and I start to feel the Holy Spirit coming up in me and suddenly like from top to bottom this electric power starts to hit me in the car and it was so crazy it was so life-changing for me I've never felt him like that ever and I was just shaking I like I couldn't control myself and so we got there and my friend um dragged me out of the car like he I think he like yeah, he, he was holding me or something and carrying me to our friends. And then suddenly, like, it would stop. Suddenly, suddenly the power stopped. And then I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, draw near to me. Come away and draw near. 
And so like I walked a bit off, um, I walked, walked a bit away from my, my friends and I would just kneel on the ground in the middle of this field and I would just wait and rest in, in the spirit. And I would just wait for like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And suddenly like I could just feel his presence coming even stronger now. And it was honestly, it was like a flash, like a lightning hitting me from top to bottom. And I, would, I was out, I was like gone. I've never felt the tangible power and presence of God like that ever to this day, actually, it was, it was so defining, so life-changing to me. And then my friends started like walking up to me and they were like checking on me. Hey, are you okay? What, what is happening? But as soon as they would like draw near to me, as soon as they would touch me, they would get wrecked and like <laughs> hit by the spirit. And like this one girl starts speaking in tongues suddenly just from laying hands on me. And then this other guy, uh, so as soon as I put my hands on him, I start seeing visions and pictures of his life and I start prophesying. I've never had anything like that happen before. And um, that moment was just so, so special to me. I've never had something like that again, but it was more like it was, it felt like the Holy Spirit introduced himself in, in might and power. And it was so humbling to me, you know, like sometimes we, like I said, sometimes we have this, this perfect picture of what God is like, of what the Holy Spirit is like. And then he just comes and he completely destroys that box. Yeah. He completely destroys every illusion. And yeah, just from that moment, the Holy Spirit just became so incredibly real. And um, I just, yeah, I just couldn't help myself, but just surrender even more to him and, and wanting to experience him even more. There are so many other times where I would, um, yeah, on different ministry trips all over Europe. Um, I, I remember, especially one in Africa, where we would pray for this one lady. She had a tumor, a cancer tumor. And she got completely set free, completely delivered. I remember this one time we prayed for a satanic queen, a satanic witch. That one, like, that, that one is pretty crazy. She would like travel from church to church, cursing people. People would die. And uh, that's only what we found out later after we prayed for her, which was good. <laughs> um, but we prayed for that lady and she got completely set free, completely healed, delivered. She also had a a, a tumor kind of thing as like a cyst in her body and uh, she completely gave her life to Jesus which was crazy goodness there's so many so many crazy stories so many even moments of worship where God just moved powerfully but um yeah those two moments are pretty special to me and that's amazing that you said like the first story you shared that you were touched not at the meeting with the anointed preacher but yeah. you you were touched like alone with the lord with your friends like watching stars and yeah. this is something really special because as i said before sometimes we expect that we will be touched at this conference but by yeah. this anointed preacher from the us or from somewhere else from africa but we actually can meet the Lord in our secret place. We can yeah. meet him alone in the forest or like in our bedroom. And yeah. this is amazing because like we need, we don't need a special person. We just need to like, we need to be hungry for him. And Not sure. yeah, for me it also, like when I actually became more in love with Jesus It was when I was praying on my bed, like trying to get to sleep and I was praying for some things. And then he came and he broke the lies that I believed in and he healed my body. But it, it didn't really matter that I was healed because I, I experienced such a love from him mm. that like for the next couple of days, I was like, somebody was telling about Jesus and I was like Jesus is so awesome Jesus is so awesome I'm like, I'm, I'm <laughs> listening to any worship and I'm starting to cry and like nothing matters because he is so awesome and it became so real for me and I wasn't at the conference I was just in my room praying and he came and this is this is really amazing about him it's so mind-blowing just to just to imagine that the king of glory he's actually he wants to be available for us he wants to encounter us like how crazy is that who are we that he wants to meet with us i think that's just so incredibly humbling and 
Yeah, I still I still don't understand it. I wish I could. I wish I could under grasp it, but I can't. And and I don't honestly I don't ever want to understand it because it's it's this tension that is just so beautiful. Like my goodness, he's so incredible. He's so worthy. Yet he chose to be with us. He chose to pay a price. He literally paid the highest price just so we can be with him. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, lo I love what it says in John 17, verse three, where it's, I, I quote this verse quite a lot, but it says, this is eternal life that we may know him, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent that we may know eternal life literally means to know him literally means to encounter him, to be with him. There's another, another story in the Bible where this, this group of people approaches Jesus and says, Lord, we, we have casted out devils in your name. We have raised the dead. We've healed the sick. And Jesus just looks at them and says, depart from me. I've never, I never knew you. And it's, you know, like, it doesn't matter how successful we are in Christian ministry. It doesn't matter how much knowledge we have. It doesn't matter how many stories of the Bible we can recite, how many quotes we can recite. What matters is if we are intimate with him, if we actually truly know him. And, and it's just so eternal life starts right here and now as we approach him, as we know him right now. Not just one day when we get to heaven. That's just a part of it. But eternal life starts right here and now as we encounter him, as we know him. And that's just honestly, that's mind blowing to me. He wants us to get to know him more, to discover more. And there is always more. There is always more to look for in him. Yeah, so you are after your first online event with Awakening Europe, right? Was it the first one? It was our um, first online awakening night. So we have yeah. this thing called awakening nights where we would usually before Corona, we would meet every other week on the Thursday just to worship God and, and hear a, a great message. But this was our very first online worship event basically we had um our callback event which was our bigger event um, that was planned for last year we did that online as well but this was our first online awakening night yeah yeah so do you have any testimonies from people watching i got a ton of messages from people saying that they got super blessed super touched um that the Holy Spirit just like radically walked into their room as they were worshiping, as they were listening to the message. So that honestly, that was really encouraging for me. It was quite um, like I had many different, I was organizing that. I was mainly organizing that event. And so for me, it was a bit, um, I was a bit stressed before. And so um, it, it was really, really good to hear that people actually encountered Jesus. You know, like it's online, it's online is always a bit, like funny i i'm not the biggest fan of online meetings yeah. of online events but just to hear that there's so many people who got blessed and really went into the presence of god and really worshiped with us was so encouraging that was really really encouraging that's yeah. cool i i was always hoping that awakening europe will finally come to poland to do come a big on. event yeah <laughs> yeah come on come invite us we would love to come in fact actually i think Someone else from Poland, I, for, I forgot her name, but I think she wants to do some sort of conference or something with Ben and myself. I, I can't remember, but something is happening in Poland for sure. And yeah. we would love to there. I love, I love Poland. I love the food. Love <laughs> Great food. Yeah. So when you come to Poland, we will do like special Polish treatment for you. Oh, for sure. Oh. <laughs> already excited <laughs> yeah it's crazy honestly we get so many invites from all over europe and we um really felt for this next one to go to the netherlands god is really doing something special in in the dutch people and then um yeah we'll see what happens after that honestly even with corona it's like everything is so uncertain yeah we're really praying and believing for our next event next year But uh, honestly, would love to come to Poland, even if it's not just a big stadium event or whatever, but just to like maybe for, for a conference or something. We, we always love to travel and love to be yeah. with the Polish people. Is there something that you would like to share to people watching in Poland? But also, as I know, we have some listeners in South Africa and, and in the US. So is there something that you would like to share like out of what we were speaking yeah even as i was like preparing a bit for today i really felt 
from the Lord to remind us to stay present and to not get distracted in this season. I don't know what the restrictions are in Poland right now or all over the world. Like it varies a bit, but in Germany, it's actually like opening up more and more, which is super exciting. Even for me, I'm like, I'm so pumped to finally see more people, to finally hear people sing in church again. Last Sunday was the first Sunday where people act or two weeks ago was the first Sunday where people could actually sing the entire time. They just had to wear masks and stuff. And it's honestly, it's very exhausting. It was, it was a very exhausting time, but also so precious and so special. And I felt how the Lord was really cleansing his bride. He was really drawing his bride near to him. And, you know, suddenly we didn't have anything. We didn't have any crazy church services anymore. No crazy music, no light effect shows and whatnot. But suddenly it was just us and the Lord. And and for me, it was honestly one of the most important and most most powerful seasons in my life, this whole Corona time, because I got so much time just to be with him, just to get transformed in his presence. But I really felt from the Lord to use this time even now as everything is opening up more, as everything is trying to get back to normal, to not get lost in that to not get lost in that excitement, but to actually stay present and stay focused because it's so easy to distract yourself. Even in my own life, it's so, I I already feel like I want to do, I want to hang out with all my friends again. I want to do this. I want to travel. I want to do this and that. I really need to make sure that I'm, I'm focusing on Jesus. And, and just because Corona rules and restrictions are changing, that doesn't mean that this is giving us hope. You know, Jesus is the hope of glory. He is hope himself and we need to choose him over and over again and and i really believe that we're on the tipping point of revival i actually believe that we're already in the midst of revival and god wants to break out in our nations like never before but we need to be ready for that we need to prepare ourselves for that and we need to keep our hearts pure and and clean and and fully engaged fully present i love i love this this picture in malachi 3 where it talks about gold being refined you know like gold needs to in order like you need to treat gold correctly and you do that by by heating it up refining it and and that way all those dirty metals get off that gold you can just scrape it off but it needs to be heated it needs to be very very hot you need to refine gold and and i sense the same like this this season feels like a season of fire it feels so uncomfortable so exhausting so annoying but it's so important and we need to use the season correctly. We need to dig deep into the word. We need to know what the word is saying. We need to know the gospel and we need to know him in our secret place and in in intimacy. And, and that way we, we prepare ourselves for when Jesus is coming. That way we prepare ourselves when revival is going to break out and people are getting saved left and right all over Europe. And I really felt to encourage especially the Polish church and, and everyone who's listening. And to be honest, I'm, I probably encourage myself the most because it's so easy to, to get distracted with all, yeah. you know, even with Christian things, with holy things, with ministry things, like traveling, preaching in different churches, like it's exciting as long as we stay present and as long as we stay intimate and pure with, with Jesus. That's the most important thing. Yes, amen, amen. This is actually what the Lord spoke to me uh, this weekend, and He spoke wow. to me personally that this is time for intimacy. Like in Poland, it also everything is opening up, but I feel like the Lord is inviting me again to this place of to this secret place, the place of intimacy wow. with Him, and like going deeper in His presence and what He wants to speak to me to my heart like when i'm when i'm alone yeah so this is this is really important and what you said about this gold we were also talking about it like with the the prophet guys that i interviewed before and and this is amazing because like last two months for me for people i know it was like crazy like tensions and stuff like this and like lord what's going on like we thought we were doing everything right and i feel like everything is shaking under our feet like and i know that was that's the season of like those birth pains that are coming before the revival like the the lord is uh, 
starting to birth something new on earth as you said this this revival coming and mm. like all the things that are shaking like it's the enemy who wants to stop it but it's also the lord who wants to like prepare our hearts and show us like in which place our heart is so when mm. something wrong is happening you're like wow lord do you hate me what's going on you know but it's actually an invitation what's going on in your heart and so true. deal with it because I want something more for you and you, you have to be prepared. You have to not like go crazy when all those things are happening. And I'm, I'm actually preaching to myself right now. <laughs> that was really nice talking to you. I, I really yeah. enjoyed it. I am, I am encouraged. I feel the presence of the Lord. So if you would like to pray for Poland or for our listeners right now, and then we would finish and say goodbye absolutely my pleasure thank you father thank you so much for just this opportunity even now to to speak about you god it's it's honestly the greatest joy to talk about you to talk to others about you and to share about what you have done in our lives father you have been so merciful so kind so gracious and it's Father, it's the greatest privilege just to worship you, just to be in your presence. Just the fact, like we said, just the fact that you are available, you're accessible to us. We get to touch you. How mind-blowing is that? This king of glory, so strong and so mighty. Who is this king of glory? Who is this king of glory? Thank you so much, Father, that you make yourself known to us. And so, Father, I thank you for the country of Poland. I thank you for every listener um, from Poland, for every Polish listener. Father, I pray that you would come and touch every single one of them. Come and touch them radically. Father, I pray that you would stir up a hunger inside of them. Father, I pray that you would draw them so near to you. Draw them, Father. Draw them. I really, I really sense this, this word, draw draw near. I really want to encourage you guys, every single one of you who's listening, draw near to him, yeah. come away with him, draw near to him, just be alone with him, be alone with him. He longs and desires to be close to you. And Father, I really pray that you would stir up this hunger for a deeper intimacy, this hunger to be with you in the secret place. Stir it up, Father. And not just so we can keep it for ourselves, but so we, we are the light of this world, so we can be the salt. We can be the light, Father. We are the city on a hill. Father, I pray that you would move through every single one that is listening, Father. And I pray specifically for Poland that you would save this nation, God. I pray that you would save Poland, Father. I thank you for this incredible nation. And I know that it's, it's very uh, traditional, and there's many traditional conservative churches, Father, but I break off the spirit of religion, Father, and I yes. pray, Holy Spirit, that you would invade this country, this precious nation, this precious country, Father, with your Holy Spirit. And I declare that the harvest is ripe, Father. The harvest is ripe, Father. I pray that you would open up people's hearts to receive the good news. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for this call. I thank you for this time that we had together. And we magnify your name, King Jesus. We magnify you. We glorify you. Yes, Lord. We love you. We thank you for this precious time that you are, you are here right now. You are touching our hearts and you are encouraging us to the greater intimacy with you and to seeking your mm -hmm. face more than ever. And I also thank you for this word of encouragement to seek those moments of a long time with you yes, and i bless everyone who's watching and listening us right now and i thank you for every single person i bless them and i ask you to just fill them with your love with your presence and help them to go deeper with you lord and i also thank you for this time of of heating of cleaning the gold that yes. you stored in us lord i yes. ask you to help us see um, your hand in in those moments and and to deal with those trials with those hard situations uh, yes. with your perspective and to help us be clean completely for the things that you are preparing for the earth so i ask you to help us use this time of trials in heating and burn in yes, in, in the good way lord 
so we can be purified to to do your will in 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 a perfect way in the way that you want us to do it in the name of jesus amen so powerful oh. Yeah, I am. I am really blessed, and and thank you so much for, uh, for accepting this invitation. Yes, yes, so good to be on here. Thank you so much. Sometimes we have this perfect picture of what God is like, of what the Holy Spirit is like, and then He just comes and He completely destroys that box. And I really believe that we are on the tipping point of revival, and God wants to break out in our nations like never before. But we need to be ready for that. <laughs> Polish and German is pretty similar, isn't it? Lots of like sausages and meat and stuff.